Hi, thanks for joining me as we work on limiting reagents in stoichiometry. I'm going to use what I call the BSA. Um, B stands for um, before. So we have got before, and then we have shift. A stoichiometry is assumed to go 100% to product um, unless somehow specified otherwise. And then A for after. Sometimes you'll see a C there before change after. Doesn't really matter. Um, but what we want to do is we want to either use moles or we can use molarity if all dilutions have occurred. So if we've used all, you know, performed all dilutions that are needed, in other words, we've used voom voom as many times as needed, you can use pressure and volume as long as the other gas variables are held constant. Um, so this is a very, very flexible um, technique. It's a little harder up front. There's just a twist to it that I think is a little bit more challenging. But I think the extra time is worth it because once you finish that chart out, every question that is asked is, is pretty straightforward um, because you'll have moles, moles to mass, moles to volume. If it's um, a gas, uh, you can draw particle diagrams. Everything is laid out for you so nicely. So that's why I like this approach. So to start with, we're going to determine the moles of each substance present. So I'm going to start with zinc. I have 35 0.60 grams of zinc. Mass to moles use molar mass, 65.38. And as always, um, I tell my kiddos, always watch my math. Um, any one of us can have a finger slip, sadly. Um, I saw a lot of those grading the AP test. We want to be careful, and I did go over this twice, but please check my math. We have 100 grams of iron 3 sulfate. And I did a quick Wikipedia search and found that that is 399.88 grams for every one mole. And so I'd have 0 0.2501 moles. It's really helpful to put zero point. Um, again, on the AP test, I graded and I could not tell whether the decimal point was there. If you put a zero in front, it really sets that decimal point off. None of this and none of that. Now, the key here is determining which one of these is limiting. So what we want to do is compare what we have, in this case, to what we need. We need a 3 to implied 1 ratio, that 1's implied. And a very quick way of doing that is you take this number, 0.5445, and divide it by 3. Um, 0.5445, whoops, sorry, over 3. That's not very neat, but you get the idea. 0.5445 divided by 3, and I get 0.5445. 1815. So we're comparing what we have available to what we need in terms of a ratio for the reaction to occur. I don't need three moles of zinc for this reaction to occur. I need a ratio of three to one. Um, once you've done that, you pick the smallest, right? And then you ignore these numbers for the rest of the time. So since this was the smallest, my zinc, I'll write the answer down here in my notes, what is the lim limiting reactant is zinc. So um, once you have done that, I urge you to cross those numbers out. Now AP, uh, I'll, I'll do another video in which we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail. That number can be very useful for AP chemistry. Okay, so now everything is going to proceed from my limiting reactant. So you just write down those moles in every spot. Remembering we lose reactant and we gain product. That's why there's plus signs for product because we're gaining product and we're losing or loss of reactant. But there's a caveat. We can't just write that alone because these relate on a mole-to-mole -mole basis. 
So this is my from. Everything is originating from there. Your mole ratio is always where you're going to over where you're coming from. So I'm going to multiply this by 1 over 3. My mole ratio, 2 iron 3 sulfate from zinc. And then this would be 3 over 3. I'm going to go ahead and write that explicitly so you know where those numbers came from. And this would be 2 over 3. Where you're going to goes on top. The limiting goes in the denominator. That's the hard part. It is pretty much downhill from there. If you add the BS, you get the after. All right. So, of course, I'm out of limiting. That's the whole definition of the limiting. So there won't be any grams of zinc remaining. And I have 0 0.0686 86 moles. Remember this is all in moles. And 0 0.5445 moles. And then I've got 0 0.363 moles. Okay. Now, once I have moles, like I'd said, almost everything is um, pretty straightforward. Uh, down at the bottom, the other one of the other questions is, is how many grams of our excess remaining? You see it clearly in the table. There's no memorizing an algorithm um, like um, off, is often taught, like I taught for years, in fact. So 0 0.0686 moles times 399.88 grams for every one mole and I get 20.2 or 27.4 27.4 grams of my excess remaining okay and then you can't quite see it on this page and those of you who have my notes can see that um, I need a little bit more room the next question says what is my theoretical or maximum the theoretical yield is the maximum you could make assuming everything was perfect in the reaction and there were no side reactions and it asks for the pure iron could have asked for the um, zinc sulfate but it, I didn't so I've got this many moles of iron mass to moles use molar mass iron is 55.85 grams for every one mole. So for my iron I would have 20.27 grams of iron remaining or formed excuse me that's my maximum yield. Okay that was a lot I have another couple videos on this and so I hope you'll turn, tune in and uh, really clarify this method because it's a big win, um, especially heads up, AP and IB. It's a huge win when we get to acids and bases. Thanks for joining me.